James Comey is uh, back in the news again. Comey stories now are the new, is Jennifer Aniston pregnant? <laughs> this, this new story goes back to last July when Comey was still the FBI director and we were all 80 years younger. <laughs> back then, in the middle of the election, Comey took the unprecedented step of holding a press conference to announce the FBI had found no criminal conduct in the Hillary Clinton email investigation, but that she had been a very, very bad Secretary of State. Okay? Bad Clinton. <laughs> Nobody knew why Comey did it until now, because the Washington Post is reporting that Comey based his decision on a Russian document now viewed within the FBI as unreliable and possibly a fake. Comey, Comey fell for fake news. <laughs> he should have known when the document's return address was 12 Actual Avenue, Truthburg, Real Tucky, USA. <laughs> yeah, apparently, but all the, the stamps I yeah. said Moscow. Oh, stamp, stamp it away. Apparently, and I don't understand how this happens. There's a lot about this story I don't get. Apparently, the Russians sent the FBI a fake intelligence report about Attorney General Loretta Lynch assuring the Clinton campaign that the email investigation would not push too deeply. Comey was then worried that Hillary Clinton was improperly pressuring someone to drop an investigation, which, in hindsight, makes her seem very presidential. <laughs> and when... Yeah, sure, why not? Cover up. <laughs> And when Comey read the fake report, he believed he had to come forward because he feared that if Lynch announced no charges against Clinton, then the secret document leaked, the legitimacy of the entire case would be questioned. So he did it, Clinton lost, and now only the legitimacy of the entire election is in question. <laughs> so, that's it. Comey fell for a fake email. But you know what? He landed on his feet, because I hear he's earning $2,000 a week working from home on his laptop. <laughs> yeah. I just, uh... I just... There's so many Comey stories. They're, they're an emotional roller coaster. I just don't know what to think about James Comey. First, he seemed like he's the good guy. Then he seemed like he's the bad guy. Then it seemed like he sacrificed himself to save other people. Oh, my God! Is James Comey Severus Snape? <laughs> Are we going to find out he loved us all along? <laughs> no, no. I'm being told no. I'm being told that no, he is not Severus Snape. Uh, one positive thing for the administration is that while Donald Trump is overseas dealing with the other leaders over there, he is less likely, he is too busy to say dumb stuff that could get him into trouble. <laughs> Luckily, his staff has stepped up to do this on his behalf. <laughs> Starting with HUD secretary and man counting how many black people there are in the cabinet, Ben Carson. <laughs> Dr. Carson did a radio interview recently for Sirius Radio and had this to say about the state of poverty in America. I think poverty to a large extent is also a state of mind. Yes. <laughs> poverty is a state of mind. No, no. This is true. Did you know in many states it is legal to pay your rent with optimism? <laughs> it's not in reality, but it is up here. <laughs> Unfortunately, he went on. You take somebody who has the right mindset, you can take everything from them and put them on the street. And I guarantee you, in a little while, they'll be right back up there and you take somebody with the wrong mindset, you can give them everything in the world. They'll work their way back down to the bottom. Yeah, it's all about mindset. I mean, remember the Great Depression when America had a case of the blahs? I mean, <laughs> look at this Debbie Downer. Come on, turn that frown upside down, little lady. Why not look at the bowl as half full of dust? <laughs> and speaking of the administration, we just learned an important detail about Donald Trump. He has ditched his Android phone in favor of an iPhone with one app, Twitter. <laughs> Just the one. Just the one. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. I mean, what apps did I expect him to have? Words with friends? <laughs> he might have friends, but he does not have words.
<laughs> Trump is such constant and all-encompassing news that not even Disney World can escape his gravitational pull. You know, uh, you know the uh, Disney Hall of Animatronic Presidents. Oh, yeah, you know yeah, where the presidents yeah, get up yeah. and they talk. Well, yeah. sources say Disney World will overhaul the Hall of Presidents to keep Donald Trump from speaking. <laughs> <laughs> when you wish upon a star, makes no difference who you are. Now, originally, the only presidents who spoke were Washington and Lincoln, but that changed about 25 years ago. Now, whoever is currently president also has a few lines. That started in 1993 with Bill Clinton. I believe his first words were, hey, sleeping beauty, you up? <laughs> but... But Trump has said so many outrageous things that petitions are now circulating insisting that Disney's robo-Trump should not speak. One petition has over 14,000 signatures. Another petition says even closing down the Hall of Presidents is better than adding Donald Trump. But then... But then what? But if they do that, then what would they do with the Trump robot? Well, you know, if the rumors out of that Russian hotel are true, he would feel right at home on Splash Mountain. <laughs> One thing... Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Keep it light. Now, one thing's for sure. If Disney doesn't add Donald Trump to the Hall of Presidents, they should at least add his hands to It's a Small World. <laughs> we got a great show for you.